Hey everybody, it's Josh from Walnut Ridge Family RV. We're here at the uh, on a fifth wheel that we're going to hook up with the Anderson Ultimate Gooseneck Connection. The easy thing about these are we have a single point connection um, that has a, a coupler design and you don't have to be perfectly over it. So the difference in that in a traditional fifth wheel, you've got to get that lined up, come down in, lock in position. All we have to do on this, we'll make sure the front end's raised high enough, obviously. Tailgate down. When we come in, that's a very important step to remember, uh, unless you like buying tailgates. Then we're going to back in underneath this till we get the ball pretty much centered underneath the best we can. If you can't get perfect, maybe you had to come in at a slight angle and you don't have any more room with your tailgate down to get all the way in the middle, we should be okay. This thing will come down and follow it because of the way the coupler is designed. Um, but just as far as the hitching procedure goes, Let's just show you how easy that is. Once we get it back underneath, all we're gonna do, you know what, I didn't check this first. Oh, it's heavy. We're gonna make sure that, our, that we're unlocked, which we are. Okay. Now we're gonna retract the jacks, lower this down on the ball. Okay, now we have the weight completely down on the ball. Um, I've stopped there because I want to show you, and I'll try and do this with this down a little bit so you can see better. Watch your shins. I am going to have to put it up. So this handle, the handle could be mounted in different places. Sometimes we put them over here. Some people like to actually put it up in the bulkhead. Um, this one's on the back end of this. But all we do is there's a there's arrows tells you which way to lock and unlock which is actually kind of counterintuitive because it's uh, counterclockwise to, to lock and clockwise to unlock. So you would think tightening would be clockwise, but it's not. So anyway, as long as you got it unlocked and you can push that in, once you do that, and you're gonna snug that down. Now that can't come back out. We're locked on the ball. There's a pin that goes across the underside of it um, to lock that in place. We're good to go as far as actually hitching it on the ball. Obviously you take your breakaway cable and put somewhere on the hitch, um, on a pin or something on the hitch, plug your seven way cord in. And then for Anderson's, it depends on your local laws, state laws. Indiana, you have to have, when it becomes a gooseneck connection like this, you have to have safety chains. So you can see, we actually have some chains that are coiled up in there and there's hooks uh, that go on this coupler. That's where you're gonna hook your chains to. So you'd wanna make sure you get those hooked up before you tow it. So if you're from a different state and you're towing it, that may not be the law, but you might want to check if you're going to cross uh, multiple states going to your camping destination, you may want to check those laws because it might be required to have safety chains on there. Last thing you want is a headache like that and a court appearance over, over something that's easily fixed. So you want, you want to check that out make sure you have that um, hooked up if you need it. Now, once we got it on here, the next step, we can go ahead and close this actually. Hopefully, I got it closed. Come down on me. Um, depending on the camper you have, a lot of them now have auto leveling, so you could go in and push some buttons for auto retract. It's just going to go ahead and run these legs the rest of the way up. This one's a little bit more old school. It's got uh, just front landing gear um, with an actual external switch here to use. So you're just going to, you would run these. Obviously, you're going to run this all the way up. You don't want to. You don't want to run them too far to where you start uh, ratcheting on the jacks. There's a possibility you might blow a fuse or break a shear pin in the jack, and then you're going to have a hard time getting unhitched. So I'm not going to do this all the way because we're going to unhit unhitch it and, and uh, do something else. But uh, I just want to show you, once you got that weight off of there... Oh, I started lifting it, didn't I? You're supposed to tell me I'm hitting the button the wrong way. I wasn't even paid attention. retract these jacks all the way you would run these jacks all the way up so this will be easy enough i just got to get the weight off to show you the one final step which is just going to be running these feet up and locking into position obviously we wouldn't leave it this low while we're towing we would run those all the way up uh 
But then that'll go into the next step of out when we get to the campground, we need to unhitch. So the first thing you would do, get in your spot, you got everything. Looks like you're fairly level. So when you level it up, you won't have problems, especially if you have an auto level. Uh, any of the campers with auto level built in, you need to be within, I think, two degrees of level. Yeah. So you don't have a very high tolerance at all. So if it's off on one side or the other, you run your auto level, it's gonna give you an error and the most common is that left front jack. And then if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of a little cumbersome to do the homing uh, process to reset that error code and get it out. And then nobody wants to listen to a, a constant beep all the time on their jack. So make sure at this point before you unhitch that you're you're fairly close that your auto level will work. You need to put some boards or, or some, uh, some stackers uh, that, like what we sell here or links levelers underneath one side on the tires, then you get that done. Okay, so we're confident that we're gonna be level. We're gonna drop these jacks down, and lift that a little bit, make sure that pin goes all the way through. You can see it on the other side. You wanna make sure it's all the way through and didn't get snagged like slightly out where the pin's not protruding on the other side here. Because then when we put pressure, that's gonna bend these um, if we don't have that pin all the way through there. So make sure on both sides it's all the way through. That one's already good. We're fairly close on it. Another thing you'll want to keep in mind, if you're on a slope that maybe is going a lot downhill, you don't want to drop those too far to where you don't have enough jacks that the front end needs to come down, which is maybe, maybe how you're sitting when you get off the truck, you need to actually lower it past uh, where it started when you first got there to get level. And then if you didn't, you're not going to have any jack to be able to get it down. You have to put your truck back under it, jack it up, adjust those legs, redo it. So it can be a pain in the butt. We're good here because we're on fairly level surface. Um, so at this point, we would hit the extend button and run these jacks down. Um, what we would want to do is get them with an Anderson. Now this is going to work a lot like the weight distribution on a travel trailer does. We can't just go ahead and lift all this weight up, then we won't be able to pull that pin off the ball because we'd be putting pressure against it. We just want to get the legs down on the ground, a little bit of pressure, um, we haven't lifted all the weight off the truck yet so that we can unlock the pin before we go ahead and do it. You don't want to, you don't really necessarily want to unlock that before you run the, the legs down. It's a very slim chance that something would happen that that would break off and the camper would fall, but why take the chance? So, got pressure on the leg. You can come around here. We're going to unlock that and we're going to pull that pin in the unlock position. Go ahead and snug that that way won't move on you when you go to run this off. Now, all we gotta do is extend these legs. We're gonna go until we get it off of the ball and ready for the truck to pull out. Probably a good time. Go ahead and remember to get your tailgate down. You don't wanna pull out with the tailgate up. Especially nowadays with tailgates having cameras and sensors and lights and automatic tailgates. Uh, probably costly to, to replace if you was to try and pull out with the tailgate up. Keep in mind now at this point is where we're unhooking at the campground or even at home. So we would actually take the safety chains off, go ahead and take the breakaway switch uh, cable off of whatever it's hooked to, unplug the same way, coil that up out of the way. And we have to run this thing until we get clear of that ball. Now, Josh, would you say all in all that the Anderson's a little bit easier to do than a traditional fifth wheel hitch? Oh, no, by far. By, by far? far? Yeah, uh, it's a lot less hookup. It's actually, in my opinion, and I'm totally with you, uh, a smoother ride. Um, no chucking. Uh, it just it just feels completely different than a, a traditional fifth wheel hitch, and the the good part is, and we're going to go over this real quick before we pull this out of here. I think I got enough to clear. I'm going to jump up here in the back of the truck. Sure. Quick. So I want to show you something. So this coupler goes on the actual fifth wheel pin, and then these bolts that go through are actually going on on the fifth wheel pin itself. Uh, you know, there's a there's that notch around it um, where like the jaws would lock in on a traditional fifth wheel. So that's essentially all we've done is these bolts have went through that notch. 
And so that's what's keeping that from being able to come off of there. And then on the bottom, there are four set screws that take an Allen key and there's a certain foot pound, I think 45 foot pound or something like that is what these need to be torqued to. It's not a whole lot, but they're just there to, they're kind of a little piercing screw and they're just there to keep that thing from rotating around on you. Um, but that's what I want to talk about. The good thing about this is, so we have this set up right now and it's in the back position for a long bed truck basically um, because we know we have enough clearance with the cab um, whoever this uh, customer is um, they can have it back so that puts the weight basically over the axle like it's intended to be however if you had a short bed truck um, and and you needed a little bit more uh, clearance back to be able to make a turn this can be spun around the other way so you get four inches more you know coming forward uh, spinning this around um, so you can you just loosen these up you loosen these bolts just a little just enough you rotate that thing around facing the other way tighten those up tighten those set screws and now we've just gained extra clearance behind you the only thing you want to do on that is make sure if you have a like an extended kingpin or something or, or if it's got a weird setup on the bracket for the back that you have clearance for it to, to be able to go inside the truck and make the turns and, and against the tailgate. Because I have seen in a couple of instances where we couldn't have it in that position on the short bed. It just it put the hitch too far back and you're gonna get into your bed rails. Um, so we had to turn it the other way, but it worked out because the, the caps on that trailer was made that they had the clearance to be able to, to get around it. So you have options on how this can be hooked up. So it's really, uh, you know, pretty versatile for, for any truck out there. If you have a gooseneck already in it and you don't want to put rails and all that. If you don't have a gooseneck, um, they make a rail version that can go in fifth wheel rails uh, to be able to use this and convert it over to it. Uh, so you have options to get that done. But yeah, all in all, it's a pretty uh, solid hitch and an easy hookup. Um, make, I mean, why not spend time camping and not messing with your hitch and all that? So, okay, I think that's all we have on hooking up the Anderson.